So you're looking to get your first bike, or maybe you even already got your first bike and you've been riding around, but there's some tools and accessories that you need that every single cyclist needs to keep you and your bike happy. Now everything on this list, they're essentials. Every cyclist uses these on a regular basis. I'm not going to tell you to buy any bike tools or accessories that you don't need, but I'm also not going to leave anything out that you actually need. So here are all the essential bike tools and accessories that every cyclist needs to start riding and continue riding. Speaking of riding, this video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. My Wabi Special is such a good bike that it is the only bike that I own. And the good news is that Wabi Specials are in stock right now. You can go to Wabi's website and order a Wabi Special. The Wabi Classic, their most popular model, looks like it sold out again. <laughs> but you can go to the website and pre-order Wabi Classics. And the Wabi Lightning, which is their lightest model, made out of super fancy, some of the lightest steel tubing that money can buy, Columbus Spirit Tubing, is in stock right now. And the thing about getting your first bike is that a lot of times you don't want to spend a ton of money on it, but if it turns out that you actually like cycling, you're going to end up upgrading a three, four, five hundred dollar bike and end up with something that's a thousand dollars or up, most likely, speaking from experience. So if you do know that you actually like cycling and can commit to something a bit nicer, Wabi Cycles has got your back. Since there are just absolutely no required upgrades out of the box, the bone stock Wabbies, I could happily ride them. I just don't because I like fixie points and that's really the only reason. So do yourself a favor, Check out Wabi Cycles linked in the description. For all the gear that we'll be talking about today, you can find linked in the description for your convenience. Anything that you purchase through those links, bike related or not, I get a small portion of at no additional cost to you to help me continue to run the channel. So thank you for that. First up, here are four essential bike accessories that are must haves. Number one, I'm not going to beat this dead horse, but definitely get a helmet. There's cars, you're gonna be riding around cars, most likely, and your skull, I don't, I don't care how tough you think you are, how boneheaded you think you are, it's not as tough as the asphalt or as a car. <laughs> you only got one brain, so use it and protect it. I recommend, oh, the geese are here. <laughs> the Jira Trinity helmet on Amazon is currently $40. It's a basic but comfortable, well-fitted, and decent helmet that could very well save your life and it's not all that expensive. And if you plan on actually riding your bike places and doing things, I know, what a concept, you definitely need a U-lock and a cable lock. Two good locks are the bare minimum that I recommend if you plan on leaving your bike unattended for any amount of time. And for a more in-depth video on how to lock your bike and bike theft and how to almost never get your bike stolen, I have never had a bike stolen knock on wood, be sure to click this video in the corner. This is the Abyss Granite X Plus U-Lock. I have used this for the past, let's see, almost 10 years now. I've never had a bike stolen and that includes overnight lockups on a college campus. And if you know about college campuses, you know that they are probably the worst place for bike theft. It's a $70 lock. Yeah, it's pretty expensive, but so is buying another bike. Cable lock, anything from reputable brands like OnGuard, Abyss, or Kryptonite will do the job. And sometimes you're going to be riding out at night, so get some headlights and taillights. For headlights, there's two types. There are lights to be seen, which are usually cheapo blinky lights, which are better than nothing, but you can certainly do better than that if you want to stay safe. Second are lights to see. These are bright enough to illuminate the road or trail or whatever ahead of you and know where you're going. You know, like a car's headlight, that's kind of what you're looking for when it comes to bike headlights. My pick is the Knight Rider Lumina 900 or 950 or whatever it is. Headlight and taillight pack. I've been using Knight Rider lights for the past six years or so and have absolutely one complaint with them, exactly one complaint with them, and that is they are still micro USB charging, which is just a minor annoyance, but overall they are really good lights and will keep you safe and will allow you to be seen from the rear and to see 
the trail or road ahead of you. I don't have one on right now because it's super sunny, but if you want to stay dry when you're riding your bike, even if you are a fair weather cyclist, look into getting a clip on rear fender that goes on and off the bike super easily. It's good to have one on hand so you don't get a long, dirty skunk stripe up your back when you're riding in the rain or even after it rains. Even if you're just a fair weather cyclist, most of the getting wet when riding in the rain happens from your bike kicking up water from the ground, not actually from just raining down on you. So even if you are a fair weather cyclist and you want to ride your bike after it rains, it's good to have one on hand to keep you nice, clean, and dry. The SKS S-Blade is my favorite one that I've used so far, but be sure to get one that fits your bike and fits your tire size. And even if you don't plan on being a bike mechanic, it's good to have some tools on hand. Here are all the essentials that can be broken up into three kits of tools. The setup and adjustment kits, the drivetrain cleaning kits, and the flat fix kit. If you want to do it right and actually improve your odds that you'll stick with riding your bike, I recommend getting the nicest tools that you can afford because tools pay for themselves just after a few times of using them compared to bringing your bike into a bike shop every time there's something wrong. Even just knowing how to do very basic maintenance and adjustments will save you a lot of money in the long run, make it a whole lot more convenient for you to set up the bike exactly how you want it, and make riding your bike just a lot more fun. And that all starts with having a good set of tools. For the first set of tools, we have the setup and adjustment kit. Whether you're buying a bike online or need to make some basic adjustments to your bike to make it more comfortable or faster, this is what you need. First, you're gonna need a good bike pump. Tires will lose air just through osmosis and need to be re pumped about once a week to once every two weeks. I really like this handy portable pump, the Topeak Roadmorph G. It's pretty easy to get up to high pressures with it despite its little size, and it folds out into a mini floor pump, all while being pretty light, and I carry it around with me whenever I ride my bike. It even has a handy pressure gauge so you know how much air is in your tires. This pump is so good that it can actually reasonably replace a floor pump for most jobs. It's the only pump that I take with me when I go and travel with my bike, which is probably half of my life. But if you're looking something sturdy or something to live at home and something to do the job a lot faster, the Topeak Joe Blow is the pump to get. It's used in bike shops all over the world. It has nozzles for both Schrader and Presta valves, so you can pump up your tires whatever type of valve stem that you have. Probably 80% of the things that you do on your bike is going to require a set of metric Allen keys. And Park Tool is the gold industry standard when it comes to making great bike tools. And this next one is dependent on the type of hubs that your bike has, but you may need need a 15 millimeter wrench to uninstall and install your wheels. Particularly a lot of single speed and fixed gear bikes use hubs that have 15 millimeter track nuts and you're going to need one of these to put them on and off. And the 15 millimeter wrench that I recommend, it's trust me like it's it's a little expensive for a 15 millimeter wrench but it's really worth it. It's the PDW 3 Wrencho. So this thing is just a really handy size. It's cleverly designed with a tire lever on the other end, and we'll get to tire levers, you need it. But the nice thing about this is you can just carry this and not a set of tire levers at all, since it's two tools in one, making your pack when you're riding your bike a bit lighter. And the really clever thing is the angle of the tire lever, when you put it on, it provides a surface for you to push down on and easily get your wheels on and off. It's just really clever. It's like 20 bucks, but it's totally worth it if you can afford it. One is just specifically, where am I? Specifically <laughs> for fixed gear riders. If you're a fixed gear rider, you need a lock ring wrench to tighten your lock ring. A lot of times when you order a bike online, it comes with the lock ring like not adjusted properly. And it's really important for your safety because if you have a loose lock ring, you might not be able to stop properly on a fixed gear, especially if you're riding brakeless. Along with that, if your lock ring is loose, you could potentially strip your hub and that's a whole 
like wheel rebuild hub replacement. It's expensive. Just get a lockering wrench. You're also gonna want some grease on hand whenever you're threading something in or when you're putting your seat post in so that your parts don't seize. Putting a layer of grease on just prevents things from getting stuck and when things get stuck, they either break or become really expensive jobs or really big pains in the butt. So just grease your threads, grease your seat post and your seat tube so you don't have to deal with that and you can just happily work on your bike and adjust it whenever you need to. Next up are three items in the drivetrain cleaning kit. The drivetrain are all the parts that make the bike go. That includes the crank set, chain ring, rear cog or cassette or freewheel or whatever you have and the chain. And these parts need to be cleaned, I would say about every 100 to 200 miles or at the very least once a month to keep your bike running super smoothly. If you don't clean your drivetrain, it can make your bike feel crunchy and just unpleasant to ride. Along with that, it can also damage and wear out the parts a lot more quickly, which again is expensive. So clean your drivetrain first, hit it with some degreaser, like some simple green to get off all the gunk. Then you're gonna dry it off with a microfiber cloth and then put on a layer of chain lube and wipe off any excess chain lube. The chain lube that I like to use is TriFlow when it's drier conditions and muck off wet lube under more wet and rainy or snowy conditions. I like to use different loops for different conditions because the TriFlow is really good when you're not getting wet. It's a thin lube, it washes off really easily, but at the same time it keeps the drivetrain nice and clean. And the muck off wet lube or any other lube designed for wet conditions, it's going to be thicker, more viscous. It's going to generally collect a lot more grime and dust, making it not super great for dry conditions, but that same viscosity and thickness of it makes it really great for riding under wet conditions since it sticks onto the drivetrain. And then there's the flat fix kit because flats are just an inevitable part about riding a bike. And I definitely recommend that you check out my video up in the top right corner on how to fix a flat. If you ever ride your bike more than five miles from home, you should definitely know how to fix a flat. In the flat fix kit, there's a spare inner tube, at least one. I like to have two on hand, one with me when I'm riding my bike and one at home just as a spare. A tube patch kit that allows you to seal up the holes in your inner tubes and tire levers to help you get your tire off the rim. Pedro's levers, they're five bucks. They're the best, just get those. I'm here, I'm here with the cold water. Biking, it can be a pretty expensive hobby, but a pretty affordable mode of transportation. And you might not have thought that you need to budget for all the other accessories and tools that go along with the bike, and it's gonna cost you about $370, and you could definitely cut down on that price if you get lower quality tools, but I don't recommend you do that because the tools pay for themselves. Just keep in mind that it may be a lot of investment up front, but once you have all that stuff, you're good to go and you can just keep riding and riding. Something that people might try to convince you that you need, but don't actually need, it might just be nice to have depending on the type of rider that you are, are cycling specific clothes. Look, I've been riding my bike like pretty seriously for the past 10 plus years and I have never owned cycling specific clothes just because I'm most comfortable in my everyday clothes and just because a bunch of snooty bike riders tell you that you absolutely need bib shorts and jerseys and cycling specific shoes that clip into your pedals you don't I ride in a button-up and jeans or t-shirt and jeans and freaking Red Wing Iron Rangers for all of my rides. <laughs> I'm perfectly comfortable. I regularly do long distance rides, some of them 100, 110 plus miles in just regular ass clothes. If you don't have the budget for cycling specific clothes or don't even like the way they look, you don't need it. So now that you have this grocery list of all the tools and accessories that you need to buy, then it comes a question of where to buy this stuff. And while I did provide Amazon links for your convenience in the description. I highly recommend that you find a good local bike shop that fits your needs and buy it from them instead. If they are a good, reputable local bike shop that caters to your needs, they will be way more helpful than me and building a relationship with them is way more important than saving a few bucks from Amazon. Because local bike shops, they're not just a place to buy bike stuff. They're hubs for the bike community. A good local bike shop can really show you how to get the most 
fun out of your bike in a way that can really change your life. So find out what type of cyclist you are. If you're a roadie with a big budget, go to a roadie shop. If you're a mountain biker, go to a mountain biker shop. If you're a fixed gear rider, go to a single speed or fixed gear shop. There's not a ton of them, but they're out there sometimes. <laughs> and if you don't really know what type of cyclist you are, you're probably in the city slash commuter camp, which will likely have most, if not all the gear that we talked about here. And city slash commuter bike shops tend to have the best prices on stuff since they're catered to more practical uses. And if you made it to this point in the video, I have definitely earned your subscription and a like. So thank you very much for making it to this point and get subscribed, hit the bell notification so you can watch more helpful bike content just like this. Fixie Famous shoutouts to Brent David, Zane Kolnick, Brandon Black, Julian Corona, Mario Perez, Gio DeZero, Scott Palangi, and David Kay for helping to make these fixed gear and cycling videos possible through your support on Patreon. <laughs> oh. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous, especially now that it's spring and beautiful.